guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and today I want to talk about how to render out wireframes because it's something that everybody needs to do eventually, especially if you're selling models or showing your topology. Nobody seems to know how to do it properly, and there's a bunch of tutorials showing these garbage methods. Some of them show the good method, but I'm going to contribute to that showing you the best method that gives you the most control and is actually the easiest to do. So let's open up Blender after I've hyped this up. I'm using version 2.81. A bunch of different versions will work. You don't necessarily need 2.81. So let's make it full screen so you can see. Uh, we could use this cube. Let's go to camera view. We could use this to do our wireframes, but that is so boring. It doesn't have that many edges. I think it has 12 edges. So let's pick uh, an object with more. So I'm going to pick a monkey. So let's pick a monkey because it has more edges. Of course, this technique works with any object that has edges, so it doesn't matter. Let's do a render. This is what it looks like because initially we have Eevee as our render engine and we have a light somewhere over here. So this is what it looks like. What we want is this with a wireframe on top. So not necessarily just a wireframe, but our render with just an overlay. So how do we do that? Well, it's super easy. Just go to the render tab and then we are gonna enable freestyle this checkbox, click it. And when we render, it's not gonna be perfect, but you're gonna notice we get our EV render and then overlaid on top on top, we have our uh, freestyle lines. And, you know, it looks pretty cool, although of course it doesn't have all the edges we want. For example, this edge is missing, this edge is missing. Uh, we do have some happy coincidences, but really it's just picking the silhouette and some of the very, very creased edges with a high angle. Um, but it's not picking them all out. So how do we fix this? And more importantly, how do we have control over every aspect of freestyle? So first of all, let's pick all the edges. To do this, go to uh, view layer options. This is where the freestyle menu is after you enable it and we can control everything. What you want to do is all these checkboxes, silhouette, gone, border, gone, crease, gone. So just disable all of those and replace it for edge mark. And if we render right now, you're going to see nothing, right? It's just our EV render. There's the invisible freestyle layer overlaid on top. And that's because we said only freestyle the marked edges. Have we marked any? No. So that's why it's not there. So how do we mark edges is probably the question you have. You go into edit mode. You select all your edges. I'm just going to go into edge mode right here. So you could select some of them. If you only want some of your edges wireframed, I'm going to select every single one of them, all of them. And then you are going to right click and you are going to click mark freestyle edge. You can do that or you can just type in the command mark freestyle, not face, but edge. And you're going to see they all glow green with the knowledge that it's going to work. And now, again, make sure you have edge mark enabled. You render what I tell you. You now have a wireframe. But don't stop here because we have a lot more control over this. So again, we can only wireframe some of them. Or, I mean, or we could do all of them. But we also have a bunch more control than just this boring thing. First of all, and by the way, some of what I'm going to say you do have control over in the render tab. For example, the line thickness but we are gonna keep it all in the view layer. So what is it that we wanna control? Well, go to the freestyle line style, open that up, and you're gonna see all these settings we can mess with. We can mess with the stroke, color, alpha, blah, blah, blah. So first obvious thing that you might consider is color. So right now we have black, we can make it white, render, but boom, you got a white wireframe. And you can pick any color you want, any color on the color wheel, which is most of them, at least in the visible spectrum. We can also mess with the alpha, which is how transparent it is. So right now it is fully opaque at one. Zero, what do you expect? You expect nothing, so it doesn't show up. 50, or around 0.5, is going to be half transparent. So that is something people want a lot of the time. If you see turntable renders, they want uh, kind of transparent-ish wireframes. I'm just going to keep it at full. We also have thickness. Again, that is something we had control over before. So we have our base thickness, which is, you know, the thickness. And then we could also change the thickness for different lines. We could say these we want in one thickness, others we want in another. So right now we have three. Let's do 10. Render. They're thick. I don't know what you expected. Um, okay. And you could just keep on with these, keep on going with these settings and modifiers and all that. Uh, but probably one of the more interesting effects is in stroke. That is basically saying what kind of line do you want? Not the color not the thickness, but what the, the style of the line, what do you want? Well, right now we just have, you know, we have a line, in this case it's white, 
Uh, what if we wanted uh, dash lines? How do we do that? Well, scroll down to the bottom. You can also control cap size, so again, or cap shape. You have a line, um, especially in the dashed line thing, you have a segment of a line. How do you want those endpoints to look like? Do you want them square? Do you want them to be butts? Apparently we have them as butts. Do you want them rounded? You can pick that, but I'm interested in dashed lines. We are gonna enable that, and you're gonna notice when we render, nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Well, we have a bunch of settings for our dash lines. We have one, two, three, four, five, six settings. They all do different things. Uh, we are only interested in these first two. The first setting, which is set to zero, is the length of our segments. The second one is the gap in between segments. So if we make the gap, this one, uh, let's do 10, a gap of 10. We're gonna render, we're gonna see nothing because we have gaps, but that's kind of meaningless if we don't know the length of our segments. So now let's add a length to our segments. Let's say five. Render. Now it's a dash line. It looks kind of hideous, but you can't do that easily with any of the other techniques. So if we want these to be a bit longer, let's say, uh, we could either decrease the gap so they're closer uh, to each other, or what we can do is just make them longer. So let's do eight for the length. There you go. Now you have that. And I just want to uh, not reiterate, because I haven't said it before, but I just want to mention, again, we have the, in this case, the EV render can be cycles, and then overlaid on top, after doing that rendering, we overlay freestyle. But let's say you don't want all the, you know, all the shading that you have going on here, like you can see the shadows of the monkey. Well, that's on the EV render layer. So of course we do it in terms of EV. We go to shading, we have our monkey, with whatever material, right now it's a material that has a BSDF, meaning it has shadows. If you don't want that, you're gonna do an emissive or an emission, it's probably the way you wanna say that. Emission of white, we render. Now it's just plain white with white uh, freestyle lines that you can barely see. So what do we do to fix that so that they're visible? We go to our line style, we make them color, we make them, I don't know, any other color, make them red. And now you can see them. So that is one way you can do your wireframe. And again, one last thing uh, before we close out, because I haven't done this with my scene yet. So we have kind of this boring principled BSDF that has the shadows, but of course any texture can be put on this. So for example, we can have a checkerboard texture, which I think uses generated coordinates to begin with. Let's see. Yes, it uses generated coordinates. Um, let's see, can we get a render of that? Make sure that is in base color. That is why we don't see it. There we go. You see it retains all that information because it basically does the render, then it overlays it on top. I wanna really stress that. So for example, these red lines, uh, they're not gonna cast uh, light rays that are gonna bounce on the model. It's like a post effect, it does it after. And that is how you do wireframes. You now know everything you need to know. Uh, I have a Patreon, uh, just saying, you get perks, but supports me. Bye-bye.